This is a review focused on what anesthesiologists know, what anesthesiologists are used to working with. So we can go through the complete ACLS certification protocol in a more concentrated and focused way, uh, geared towards anesthesiologists rather than geared towards the general public. Uh, we will go a little faster than the AHA study material since a lot of this material anesthesiologists are familiar with. But this is in no way to represent a replacement of the AHA study material. You definitely want to study that stuff too. But this will be a way of knowing right away and using the tools we use every day as anesthesiologists to get your ACLS certification. So let's start right in. The nasal trumpet is used when a patient is obstructing, but there's still enough with it that they would fight you if you put an oral airway in. This is familiar to any anesthesiologist. The patient is waking up from anesthesia and they're obstructing a little bit, but they're partially awake. So you put in a nasal trumpet and you can relieve the obstruction. All right? You put a little lubricant on and make sure it slides in easily, and that should relieve an obstruction. You're going to put this in a patient who is pretty much obtunded and starting to obstruct because this thing is a pretty stimulating device, as anyone who's worked in anesthesia knows. So you put the oral airway in and make sure you're lifting the tongue up. That's all you really have to go over for the nasal airway and the oral airway because these are things that anesthesiologists know how to do. You want to make sure you lift the jaw, get a good seal, squeeze the bag, and you can see the lungs are going up. And you're going to have to demonstrate that you can do this during your ACLS certification. Enough said, we're anesthesiologists, we do this every day. Interestingly, you don't need to demonstrate in ACLS now that how to intubate. Now that's something that anesthesiologists know how to do, but for the general public who's learning ACLS, they don't need to demonstrate how to intubate. However, you do need to demonstrate the proper ability to manage someone once they're intubated. And again, this is all bread and butter stuff for anesthesiologists. I'm including it to be complete. You want to make sure that your ventilations ventilate both lungs. You don't want to have a right main stem intubation. You want to make sure you're not in the esophagus. So you want to at least do two different ways of making sure that the uh, tube is in the right place. So listen to the chest, an end tidal CO2 detector, listen over the stomach. A real important point in uh, ACLS nowadays is not to hyperventilate, not to overventilate, okay? In days of yore, in our panic, we would often, in a code, ventilate like crazy. This causes a terrible decrease in venous return and actually worsens the outcome in a resuscitation. So one thing you want to make sure you do is, once you have intubated, just breathe 10 times a minute. 